Thank you again for being with us today. Welcome to Signs of the Time. My name is Reverend David Douglas. I'm going to give you the subject of today's study in just a few moments, but please stay with us through the length of this. It's not going to be very long, but I believe that this will be a blessing to you today, and just pray that you would receive it uh, with an open heart, an open mind, like I said, that God would richly bless your life today. But thank you again for tuning in. For all those you know who have already subscribed to our YouTube channel, if you hadn't done that, you know, as soon as this is all said and done today, click on that subscribe button. You know, give us a thumbs up. Our comments are open. We'd love to hear from you. Make some comments. Uh, you know, whatever that you know it may be. Uh, and let me know where you're listening from. Many has already uh, did that. I mean, Portland, Oregon, Oklahoma, again, the Philippines, uh, even in my home state, Forest Park, Georgia, Jacksonville, Florida, Apache Junction, Arizona, uh, even Perth, Australia, Southeast Texas, Toronto, Canada, Quebec, Canada, uh, just different places. I mean, even Scotland. That's a lot of where my roots come from, uh, according you know, to my family history is there uh, in Lanarkshire, Scotland. So we have some listening from Scotland and even the Philippines. But wherever you are today, like I said, just thank you for being with us. But we're going to get on into the study. And before I read the scripture text today, I want to say that I'm still going to be talking about preaching and teaching today, even about the signs of Christ coming. And today I'm going to mention an event that shows us how close we are to the coming of the Lord and the tribulation period. It is a prophetic sign that we are in the last days and that the rapture of the church is imminent. Let's turn in our Bibles to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 16 down through 21. So if you have your Bible, or if you got a Bible app, or however that you use the Word of God, whatever version, you know, that you may read, you know, I'm not King James only. I know some are, you know, and that's their prerogative. Uh, but I do do a lot of uh, preaching and teaching from King James. That's just kind of what I started out with, a lot that I quote from. But in my studies a lot of times, and even uh, in some of the messages, I will use other versions of, of the Bible uh, actually you know, to help as far as to get the message across. So I don't believe that there's, as long as it don't take the blood out of the Scriptures and takes away as far from, from the truth of God, you know, you know I'm, I'm all for it. But Acts chapter 2, start reading at verse number 16. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe that deserves right there a big amen. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, we usually as Bible preachers or teachers, you know, we will focus on the verses 19 and 20, where it talks about where there will be wonders 
in heaven, signs in the earth, blood, fire, vapor of smoke, sun turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. You know, there's been a lot of emphasis on the blood moons, you know, lately, the red moons. You know, I have preached a lot and about that, those things, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is God's word. That is the word of God. But we seem to forget verses 17 and 18 where God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, upon the sons and the daughters, upon the young men and the old men, upon the servants and upon the handmaids. And by doing this, God would use them mightily to prophesy, you know, the, the young and the old, male and the female. And by doing this, God would use them mightily to prophesy, it says, dream dreams and see visions, and I believe to do the works of Christ. But you know, Jesus told his disciples, the works that I do, greater works than these shall you do also, because I go unto my Father. And all this would happen, the Bible said, before that great and notable day of the Lord. What is the great and notable day of the Lord? What is the day of the Lord? It is the coming of the Lord, and it is also when God judges and actually pours his wrath out on this world. The day of the Lord is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, But the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So, I told you I would give the title of this study today, and the title of this message is The Greatest Revival before the coming of the Lord. Let me repeat that. The greatest revival before the coming of the Lord. The last day started on the day of Pentecost when God poured out his spirit at the birth and at the start of the church. So the countdown started then, so to speak, when God poured his spirit out on the day of Pentecost. Now, to give you some facts that it is getting close to the return of Jesus Christ, God is still pouring out his spirit today. The day of Pentecost was not the only time that God poured out his spirit. When God poured out his spirit on the apostles and those 120 in the upper room, that was not the only time. In fact, to show you how soon the coming of the Lord is, at the turn of the last century in Cherokee, North Carolina, at a place called the Shearer Schoolhouse, God poured out his spirit on a movement during the early beginnings of the Church of God. This is the Church of God that has its headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee. And the year was 1896. People then, at that moment of the outpouring there at the Shearer School, how people began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. It was recorded. There's a record about it. Then in 1901 in Topeka, Kansas, God poured out his spirit again in that Topeka, Kansas outpouring. Then in 1906 on Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California, that great Azusa Street revival, it was birthed under an African-American preacher named William Seymour. These three great outpourings of God's Spirit began to sweep the entire globe. I, I mean, the entire globe, the Spirit of God, 
begin to flood the earth, so to speak. Now for almost 128 years, God has rekindled the flame and the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit to empower the church to bring forth the final harvest right here before the coming of the Lord. He said he would pour it out in the last days before that great and notable day of the Lord, before the coming of the Lord, there would be that final harvest and God has empowered the church to bring in that final harvest of souls. You know why? Acts 1 and 8 says that. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It was no coincidence that the flames of the Holy Spirit began to burn again there to start there in Cherokee County, North Carolina. God was getting ready for the final harvest. And we are in the greatest generation, I believe, of all times. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 32 through 34, When the fig tree is yet tender and puts forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. That it is near even at the door. That's talking about Israel becoming a nation in 1948. He goes on to say, This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Now just think about this for a moment. 52 years after the first initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost since the day of Pentecost, and, and the evidence of speaking with other tongues, you know, what was that? What, what, was, uh, what was the evidence? And then people saw uh, people being filled by the evidence of speaking with other tongues. You know, since the day of Pentecost, and I'm not saying that there probably wasn't, you know, other outpourings, but these three seem like major outpourings. Seem like began to initiate God's plan for the final harvest as far as in the earth, revivals begin to break out all over the world. So just think, 52 years after that first initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost at the Shearer Schoolhouse in Cherokee County, North Carolina, that Israel became a nation. We are in that generation right now to see uh, the signs of Christ coming fulfilled right before our very eyes. The Father knows when He will send His Son back after the church. He's wanting to see souls brought into the kingdom of God before it is too late. But before the coming of the Lord, there will be that great revival, one of the greatest revivals taking place that this world has ever witnessed. For many will be brought into the kingdom of God. Healings, miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles will take place. I mean, even the dead will be raised to life again. You know, just like the book of Acts, it's going to be like the book of Acts all over again. I don't, I don't believe it would just be contained within the four walls of a church I believe we're going to see things take place outside of the church buildings, in the street. People will be healed in the streets, in the stores, the shopping centers. I believe the dead would be raised even in the funeral homes. And I know that I'm bold by saying that. But folks, the Bible declared in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. If the Lord did it in Bible days, He'll do it in our days, in these last days, right before that great and notable day of the Lord. So God has given us a sure sign that the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the rapture of the church is right around the corner. That sure sign is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is still happening today. 
You say, Brother David, do you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Yes, I do. And I thank God. August the 6th, 1975. I mean, some 40, approximately 49 years ago at the age of 14 years old, the Lord baptized me with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave me the utterance. So, that sure sign is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is happening today. Revival is actually here, but will be intensifying and getting greater the closer we get to the coming of the Lord. You know, when Jesus splits those eastern skies one day, and he will, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. And I believe at that moment, it's almost like what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 5 and 27, that he might present it, otherwise the church, to himself, going to present it, give himself a gift, a glorious church, one without spot, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. I'm so glad that I'm a part of that church. And I'm so glad that I'm living in the times where God is still pouring out His Spirit and Jesus Christ is still building His church upon the rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're living in powerful times when it comes down to the church. God is preparing people and getting them ready for the return of Jesus Christ back to this earth. In closing, I want to say this. The last day revival will usher in the coming of the Lord. Amen. I hope this has been a blessing to you. But I believe that the greatest revival will take place, and I mean is taking place today, and then will continue on until that great and notable, right before the great and notable day of the Lord, right before his coming. Folks, Jesus is coming soon. He's preparing the church. Amen. It's like the Bible said he's going to present it to himself Amen. Jerusalem's going to come down. It's going to be like, like he said, like a wife that, that has made herself ready, a bride that has made herself ready. Get ready, church. Get ready, folks. Jesus is coming soon. Be ready for in an hour that you think not. Jesus is coming again. I love you. I appreciate you. Again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I pray that, that, that it has. You know, give us a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button. Like I said, we're less than 200 uh, subscribers away from reaching 1,000. That's our first goal. We'd love to go beyond that. That will just help us to get the message out. So again, thank you for being with us today. I'm praying for you, and I love you in Jesus' name. Amen.